G'day, this is Alex Bainbridge here from Greenneft. I'm here with Sam Wainwright, who is a national co-convener of the Socialist Alliance. And Socialist Alliance has just renewed its position on the, on the voice referendum. So I'm wondering, Sam, if you could begin, uh, can you just tell us what is the position that Socialist Alliance has adopted in, in regards to the voice? Socialist Alliance has reaffirmed the position that it adopted at its national conference. That is to say, we've adopted what we call a critical yes. So we are advocating that people should vote yes in the referendum as being the best choice. Uh, but we're also saying that we think it's, in some senses, the best of a bad choice. Uh, we've got some very strong criticisms, both of the content and the manner of the official yes campaign that's been rolled out by, by the Albanese government. And what criteria have you used in coming to this position? As I said, we've got many criticisms of the insufficiencies of the voice um, and also the messaging around the official yes campaign. But we think ultimately the, the most important way to determine whether you should support yes or no in the referendum, because the, it's going to happen and we're all, we're all going to have to vote one way or the other, uh, is essentially what will put Australian public opinion in the best position to continue the fight for Indigenous rights. Real substantial change is going to require grassroots movements for change. And we get, then they're going to need to spread across society uh, to, to achieve land rights, implementation of the Royal um, Commission into Black Deaths in Custody uh, findings, bringing them home report, all those things, all the things that need to happen, all the real change that needs to happen is going to need to be pushed by grassroots movements for change. We think that essentially the, the demoralisation of progressive opinion um, that will flow from a no vote um, outweighs the problems and the limitations of the 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 advisory body as it's been conceived of by the Albanese government. That said, uh, according to opinion polls, it's looking very likely that no will win in any case. So I think our job beyond, it's important for us to actually think about what our role is beyond the referendum, and that is to continue to support and amplify the voices and demands of Indigenous activists campaigning for real change, regardless of, they, regardless of whether they're advocating yes or no right now, and to commit ourselves to actually helping build those campaigns for change. No doubt some people will be concerned that the Socialist Alliance is not adopting a more full-throated support for the Yes campaign. Others will be concerned that the Alliance is not supporting the progressive no. Can you address both of those concerns? Well, look, that just reflects the very contradiction of the situation. So, for instance, uh, I don't take anything away from the people who are you know, genuinely passionately in favour of Yes because they want justice for, for First Nations people, including First Nations people themselves that support the voice. Um, which, you know, according to opinion polls, probably a majority do. That's been sort of contested and discussed, just how representative it is. But nonetheless, I think it's fair to say that um, a majority of Indigenous people support the voice, it, even if it's just because they think a no vote would be would be a worse worse outcome. So that's you know that's um, that's genuine. We want to connect with that and be part of that. That's that's totally understandable. Um, let's not forget, though, of course, it's also entirely understandable why. Uh, there are some Indigenous voices who identify with what they call a progressive no, um, because, but you know, for two reasons. One, because the, what is on offer is so minimal, so so symbolic, with with so little guarantees of real change on the ground, with so little detail. Uh, it's totally understandable that a, that a layer of, you know, militant First Nations activists just say, "Well, jack this," you know, we don't want to part, we want to be part of this. And secondly, because they can see that. The Albanese government is trying to very much use the voice as as a piece of uh, performative symbolism, you know, to say, "Oh, look, look how great, look how look how progressive we are." The voice is in the tradition of the nineteen sixty seven referendum, or the Gurindji walk off, and Whitlam um, granting land rights in the Northern Territory, or the Mabo decision. You know, Albanese is trying to paint it as part of that sort of continuity of change when it's actually totally minimalistic. Uh, and then at the same time, he turns around to conservative opinion and says, oh, it's just an advisory body um, that can't make us do anything. So, I mean, Albanese's, Albanese's messaging has been totally confused. So it's, it's, I think the Albanese government, by opting for something that is so minimalistic, so focused on symbolism rather than real change, and also because of the Albanese's government reluctance to couple that with some concrete substantive measures to give people confidence has just created a mess. It's created an absolute mess. I thought it was very interesting listening to the um, the National Press Club um, 
speech that Lydia Thorpe gave a few weeks ago, who, you know, identifies with a kind of progressive no position. And in her formal speech, she, you know, elaborated very much the, 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 the view of the black sovereignty movement, that they want um, truth-telling, then treaty, then voice, um, that sovereignty hasn't been ceded and why should we make the deal with this colonial parliament and all that kind of thing. It was interesting, when, when it came to discussion time with, with the journalists, uh, she indicated that she, you know, that she would have been prepared to support the voice if, if the Albanese government had been at least prepared to make a few concessions. She said that if the Albanese government had been prepared to uh, implement the, the, the findings of the Royal Commission to Black Deaths in Custody and the, and the findings of the Bringing Them Home report, then she probably would have advocated yes. But the fact that the Albanese government could, could not even give Aboriginal people a few crumbs in the real world right now makes it totally understandable that some, as I said previously, that some Aboriginal activists have just said, jack you, we're sick of this, whereas others f fear that a no vote will, will embolden, the, you know, for all the weaknesses of the voice, that a no vote will embolden racist right-wing opinion. Um, as I said, the Albanese government has created a mess and that's just something we, we all of us are just going to have to ne negotiate and not lose sight of the fact that the push for real change has to happen after the referendum, regardless of the outcome. Can you talk more about the Alliance's attitude towards working with First Nations militants, including those who support the progressive no? Well, look, I think um, we're already doing that within the best of our ability and our, and, and our small means. And you know, the, 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 camp, the, the campaigns are many. Um, so they're, they're black deaths in custody, they're housing, they're the, I'm, a, I'm speaking from a Western Australian perspective, in particular here, the, the uh, and Queensland perspective. I know the, impr the, imp the shocking imprisonment of 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 young people, of children, um, and and the list goes on. So all those campaigns um, we've been part of, uh, with with in, with and and been supporting, um, and typically those campaigns, in my experience, are led by. Uh, indigenous activists who are either progressive no or kind of critical, critical have a critical yes kind of point of view, um, and I think they they have no problem working together now and 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 will so after 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 the referendum as well. Finally, is there anything else you'd like to add, um, including the disjuncture between the Albanese government's uh, professed character of the voice as a progressive reform alongside some very conservative policies like the stage three tax cuts and AUKUS, etc. Yeah, well, to be to be frank, I mean that's that's something that I think should rightly actually give people the shits. You know, is that Albanese is trying to um, not only is he doing is 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 he it, it, you know it's an interesting phenomenon in Australian politics. Like there there is a surge of passion and interest and support for justice for Indigenous people amongst young Australians, amongst young non-Indigenous Australians. We we see that at the Invasion Day marches uh, and. The people that turned up to the Black Lives Matter protests a few years ago. I mean, there's been a surge of interest about, uh, uh, you know, and concern about this amongst uh, amongst people under the age of 30. You know, um, now I go to a lot of different protests and that sort of stuff, and they're mostly older people. But at these events, there've been younger people, no question about it, right? Um, and that's a fantastic thing. And and so Albanese genuinely has to respond to this sentiment, you know, um, and. And but the frustrating thing is, of course, is, is that Albanese has responded, as I said previously, in the most sort of minimalistic, symbolic manner he possibly can. Um, and then on top of that, um, he's quite consciously trying to use focus around the voice and, and to put, position himself as as the progressive prime minister versus Peter Dutton uh, and to take our attention off his government's utter failings on climate, on the housing affordability crisis. And it's an embrace of the AUKUS deal. So that's, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, that's where we're at in Australian politics. I think, you know, the generational divide on this question is really shown up by opinion polls as well. So at the moment, according to opinion polls, it is looking like no is going to win, you know, probably by may, maybe about 56%. Okay, that, that could change opinion polls or opinion polls. But the same opinion polls show a vast majority of people under the age of 30 supporting the voice. So news poll has it at about 56% and the essential poll has it at six, a whopping 61% of people under the age of 30 um, supporting, su supporting yet, you know, intending to vote yes. And I think a significant percentage of that young, in, you know, uh, intention to vote yes is, is genuine support and sympathy for Indigenous rights. You know, it may be conceived of in very kind of general, vague terms. It's not connected with any real kind of specific demands. 
But I think that's the positive out of this, you know, that there is generational change afoot, and that is going to be a reservoir of support for the movements to make change that we need in the future beyond the referendum. Thanks, Sam, for joining us. Thanks, everybody, for watching this video. Green Left is covering a range of viewpoints in the discussion about The Voice. You can see all of our coverage at the link in the description below. Uh, we're very interested to hear your points of view as well. And uh, if you like the work that we do, please become a supporter. Until next time, we'll see you again.